Hello everyone, it's been quite some time since I did a travel vlog, uh, obviously due to the coronavirus, but honestly, I've had enough. It's time to sack up, pack up, and roll out. As you can see, this time my packing process is a little bit different. It's because this time we're going to Lebanon. Not this Lebanon, this Lebanon. So why am I going to Bumble Pennsylvania? in the middle of a pandemic? Well, it's because I'm going to meet someone I've been trying to meet for a very, very long time, and that's a gentleman by the name of Larry Vickers of Vickers Tactical. Larry Vickers here, Vickers Tactical Channel. I got turned on to Larry and his class by a longtime friend and client of mine by the name of Raymond Pescatori of Sub MOA. Larry is into guns and watches. Ray is into guns and watches. So I signed up a bunch of my friends, and we're going to Lebanon. I'm going to give you guys a safety brief. Number one, understand this is an artificial training environment. You can tell because we have paper targets and we have a big bulletproof backstop behind the targets. Those do not exist in the real world. The reason I bring it up is subconsciously you see the targets, you see the bulletproof backstop subconsciously, and that's the last any of us are going to think about where the bullets go. Unfortunately, that can bite you in the real world because in the real world, you absolutely need to be aware of where the bullets are going because remember the, the old analogy that every bullet has a lawyer attached to it. Number two, treating guns as if they're loaded at all times. As soon as you've convinced yourself, right or wrong, that the gun is empty, you treat the gun as if it's made of plastic or wood. That's what humans really do. Here's the problem with that. There will come a day when you think it's empty and it's not, and you're gonna pull the trigger and get a loud noise. It's like an insurance policy. The reason you treat guns as if they're loaded at all times is because when you have to cash in that insurance policy, it's worth the money you put into it. You have to raise your safety awareness game when you come to a class like this. Hand in hand with treating the guns if it's loaded at all times is muzzle awareness. So if I'm standing here with my pistol and somebody walks in front of me and I sweep them, it's not his fault, it's mine. I may have to pull the gun in here. I may have to do a variety of things to keep from, keep from sweeping somebody. If you stumble or fall, you can get the grab reflex and go on. And when you have guns like Glocks, this will turn into a loud noise real easy. So this really, yeah, this meets the letter of the law for finger straight, but it's not a good idea. What you need to do 
is go what we, like my buddy Hackthorn calls the register position. For a right-hander, it's touching the bottom edge of the ejection port. For a left-hander, it's flat against the slide. And that's where your finger needs to be. When you're searching your house in the middle of the night for some meth head who kicked in the back door, this is where you want your finger, right here. I'm gonna prove to you beyond a shadow of a doubt that the wobble is really up here. It doesn't mean shit. All right, so here we go. All right, would you guys agree that's a lot of wobble? Yep, yeah. Now figure eight. And you go, oh my God, how can that be? Real simple. The wobble that was there is directly translated downrange, and it's exactly the same wobble in the target. Honest to God, what did I see? This is what I saw. That wobble is really up here. And you got to learn. And I'm going to show you. I've got a drill to show you exactly what I'm talking about, and you'll understand. I want you to aim dead center of the head. Okay. Is your pistol empty? Okay, awesome. I'm gonna put this on the front sight, all right? And I want you to squeeze the trigger and keep it from falling off. A fancy Glock there. All right, you're snatching it. Let's try it again. Go ahead and cock it. You might have to use a different demonstrator. Did you have too much coffee this morning? All right, let's lose this grip that went out with the mullet and uh, Mel Gibson. <laughs> Lethal weapon movies. There you go. Beautiful. Excellent. Let's do it again. Well done. Beautiful. Excellent. That's it. That's the drill we're going to do. Nice. Now, see what you're doing? Look, see where you go down, your fingers. Before you're ready, you got to bring that finger in and yep. then, okay? There you go. There you go. Romany, I want you in the same stance you throw a punch from. That's the same stance you want when you're shooting a pistol. All right? So we're going to put this in the front sight. On target, stand by. Perfect. Just like that. Let's do it again. Slack out. Stand by. Perfect. Yo, get a little slow mo ready. So first part of the day was great, Larry. I love the class so far. Can't wait to see what the second day brings. First, let me introduce you my good friend Ray of SubMRA, which is a security company. I've known this guy 10 plus years. I still don't know what he does or what he did. I don't think anybody does, but <laughs> security I know is, is a main issue. And of course, Larry Vickers, who in my mind is a legend of a man. Of course, I'm a YouTuber. He's also on YouTube. I'm kind of a groupie, sorry to say this. I watch your videos religiously. I only brought a couple of questions for you. Yeah. And those questions are the following. I know you're a big Rolex man. Yeah. It, what is it about Rolex that attracts you? I you guess? know, one history goes back. You know, there's World War II history to Rolex. Um, See, so you got, it's not just a brand that's, you know, say in the last few years or whatever that has come up. So there's history to it. Also, very rugged, reliable watches, well made. Here's another thing I, I like about Rolex. To me, they're one of the premier brands in the world that really manage their image, manage their brand, manage how the world perceives them and keeps themselves 
at a premier level. Another uh, company that comes to mind, and Ray will agree with me, is Porsche. Porsche does exactly the same thing. They maintain themselves as a premium brand, you know, and the way they represent themselves to the world. So I really respect Rolex for that. See, it's all that combination. Obviously, the history, military history, a lot of use of, of military and special operations throughout the, you know, decades with Rolex. So that's really what it is more than anything. And Ray, what's your thoughts on Rolex? I know you're a big fan of Rag Guy. But Absolutely. I know you're a big fan of Rag Guy, but what's your thoughts on Rolex? I share the same sentiments. It, it's the history. Um, one of the things I, uh, you brought up about Panerai, being an Italian American and the history of Panerai and it being a military based watch and the history going back to the Italian um, UDT divers, their equivalent to our SEALs or special operations, that watch just has a lot of history and it's a very rugged, you know, purposeful built watch. Um, one of the problems with Panerai, and I'm sure you'll attest to this, is that, you know, they, they started making so many watches, they kind of really depreciated the brand and didn't do what Rolex did and, you know, draw the line on discounts and how many watches they produce. Um, when Panerai first came out, they were selling at list or over and they had, you know, a handful of models and they were hard to get in the, uh, you know, when they started bringing them over post the, uh, post the Vendome. Yeah. I agree, with, I will agree with that. As a watch dealer, I will agree on that thing. Uh, as an ex-Soviet Union uh, expat, I will tell you that I'm kind of fucked, guys, because I don't really have a watch brand to go back on. <laughs> but I'm going to grab something from my backpack real quick. Because, you know, I have to bring some goodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the things I wanted to show you guys, of course, Ray is in my office often enough. He gets to see a bunch of watches. You're a bit further away from me. Of course, you're always welcome whenever you're in the area. So what I brought is I, I wanted to talk about Rolex and its versatility, right? Me wearing a Daytona. Rolex, when you said brand image, Rolex is the number one brand, which is up here. Number two is down where you can't even see. Yeah. That's how good Rolex has done it. Porsche is the same way. It was a good analogy. So what I brought is, I brought diversity, right? So how you can diversify with Rolex in terms of collectability, in terms of sizes, in terms of age. And you see a bunch of different watches here. Uh, you know, here's probably the, the most, the best looking modern Rolex today that they make in a gold, which is the new root beer as they dubbed it, right? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that they knocked that out of the park. This That's is a one cool of the watch. Ones. Of course, if you want to go super dressy and, and attract attention, there's always a line for that. And then collectability. This is my own personal watch right here. This is a watch that I've owned probably for 15 years. This watch is as old as me. And if you want to talk about durability, this single red sub, which is an older version of what you're wearing, this thing, I take it diving, I take it swimming. You can throw it against the wall, it keeps on ticking. I haven't serviced this thing in over 10 years since I've gotten it. This thing is 45 years old. And when I drop it on the table, I'm not worried whatsoever. And of course, there's so many variations, it touches upon so many things. You had, I brought this guy, which is an old school president of White Gold. And the reason I brought it is just to show how popular Rolex is. This was done for an oil company probably back about 20 years ago. There's probably a multitude of companies out there that would love to get their logo on the Rolex, and they still do till this day. But last but not least, one I wanted to surprise you with is, of course, this guy. It looks nothing but like a Rolex, I know. This is the guy that started it all, 1926, when the English were hanging out and going back, sending watches down to their colonies, they would rust. This is what gave birth to the oyster case as we know it. Oh. Screw down crown, screw down bezel, and a screw down back. So this is the watch that kind of started it all right here. And this is what I love about Rolex. Like you said, I'm a big history buff, right? And again, there's a reason they are number one. It's diversity, it's value retention, right? Oh, oh man, unbelievable. And here's a watch that back when it was sold, this watch was sold for $300. Today, you'd be hard pressed to find, maybe my example, I hate to make the sound like an antique road show, but my example is complete with boxing papers. Today, you'd be hard pressed to find this watch less than $30,000. Yep. We're talking about 100 times its original value. Larry has probably the best gun books out there, in my opinion. Thank you and he just much. came out with a new one, if you could tell us quickly about it. Well, we got two new ones coming out this year. The Air 15 Volume 1 that we're launching a reprint of it. It's a second edition, greatly expanded. Um, our biggest book yet, the thing is like 10 pounds. Really cool book. So what we took was Air 15 Volume 1 is one of our most popular books. And then in the course of our travels and, and availability of our collections, we were able to add a ton more content to that book. So now it's coming out for the holiday season. Uh, it'll be out Christmas this year, 2020. The other one that's coming out actually just slightly before is SIG Volume 1, uh, which is really focused on pistols and submachine guns. SIG's a world famous company for pistols, so that's the main part of the book. And then they have a little bit of a history with subguns, not so much. 
and then we're hoping to do a volume two down the road which will be more rifles and other weapons in the sig lines no matter whether you're a, a new person a newbie in the gun industry or you're been in somebody who's been in the gun industry for years there's going to be information in there that you may not have heard before we try to take the real important stuff and kind of skim across the top so no matter where you are on the spectrum you're going to learn something I love that. and we love really that. go out of our way to try to get information and behind the scenes stuff and little tidbits that somebody else might not be aware of and blend those into the book well, a lot We've of stuff is also based on your team's experience as well it's not like yeah. you're just posting up pretty pictures yeah, you know, without having to handle all this stuff. putting exper experience in there and things that people need people need to be aware of and stuff that's the goal so far you know it, 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 all the books get better obviously as we do I mean, the 19 lum book was for, first then ar 15 volume one they get better as time goes on of course as you'd expect um, but we've been pretty fortunate and we've been able to tap into different people in the industry to get that information. Love that. Guys, make sure you check that out. It's vickersguide.com. Yep. Speaking of books, I haven't been fortunate enough to have to write a book, but my good friends at Mandani family, they're an Italian family. They live in Genoa. And uh, they put out a series of Rolex books. And anybody who's a Rolex uh, connoisseur, Rolex lover, uh, it's a must to have one of their books. They have full-blown encyclopedias. They have books that are separated by Samarina, by Daytona. They have books on separate models. They have books that go from the beginning to the very, very end. This is something different that they did. It's called Rolex Passion. What this book was famous for is its Instagram shots that she took from around the web from Mandani Trusted Dealers. I happen to be one of those guys. Oh, awesome. And what I was lucky enough, what I was honored to do is I actually was honored to write a preface for this book. That's oh, me. Oh, man. So I didn't write a book but i certainly would love to share this book with you hope you can read this uh hope you can read the the preface that i wrote i was honored to do so when she asked me to do so excellent and on, on the same token of course thanks to ray here who turned me on to wilson combat specifically your wilson combat i would love to get your john Hancock. you got it no problem and that's an interesting an analogy uh the the wilson combat to rolex i think wilson took it to a different level uh, the 1911 market, which for a time was really, uh, you know, dying off, and they took 1911 to a level that no one ever thought, and now they're the most sought after 1911s, and they've even taken the, the basic 1911 and modified it in some double stacked and some uh, not just competition, but really combat proven weapons. I agree with him 100%. You asked me earlier, hey, I want you to think about it. What's the brand, the 1911 brand that would be most closely, if you had to think of the Rolex of the 1911 world, yeah. and I was like, oh, wow. And I started thinking about it, and it definitely Wilson Combat. When you look at the brand that has history to it, the brand that has managed their brand, the brand that has resale value, the brand that has maintained a high quality standard, that definitely it's Wilson Combat. That would be the brand that I would, the Rolex of the 1911 world would definitely be Wilson. Well, since Ray was actually the one guy that turned me on to Wilson Gun, your Wilson Guns really, because everyone I, every Wilson I own is a Vicar Tactical Wilson. I would like to get your autograph on the other side of the bag if you don't mind. Absolutely. All right. And uh, guys, I appreciate you taking the time out. I know we got to go back to training. Thank you so much, hey, Larry. You're it's a pleasure Thank meeting you. you. Ray, as always, Thank you. it's a pleasure. Thank you. Guys, we're going back to shooting. All right, thanks. All right. The challenge was you got to shoot from 25 yards one handed with your weak hand, 50 yards with your strong hand still one handed, and then both handers from 65 yards, 75 yards, and 100 yards. But the trick is you only get eight bullets to do so. If you miss a target, you gotta shoot it until you hit it. Let's go, Ray. Yeah. Nice. Nice, hey Ian, yeah, this is not this right is not like shooting a camera, you know that, right? BP9, HK BP9, and Got it. Iron Luke, let's go. It really hadn't sold very well. Nah, I seen it. It's... Got it. Yeah. There you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>
Woo! Stop! Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you. All right. Nice to Safe meet flight. you, man. Thank Safe you. Flight. And we're going to do it again in August, yeah? Sounds good. All right. That oh, was great, bro. I mean, look, I scored pretty well. So I was one of the guys that got to the 100 yard. Yeah. Yeah. I fucked yeah. up with the seven yards. So. Yeah, I, I shot three shots at seven. But then I, I had one last you bullet. Had, you I, had, had, I had one last bullet at 100 yeah. yards and I hit it.